Hello folks and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. In fact the last one, well not the last ever one, don't get too frightened, but the last one of this series of videos where we've been making this triple laminate Victorian English longbow. This is part five or six, I can't remember where we're up to, but as I say, it's the last one. If you've come to this one first and you're wondering why you're seeing the last one, you may want to click on the link above, which will take you to the first in the series of videos. And also below this video is the hopefully the complete list and links to all the other videos, which as they amount to about five or six different videos in making this bow. Thank you very much to um, our subscribers and to some wonderful donators, if that's a real word, who donated via, via our PayPal donate button, which is on the banner at the top of our YouTube channel. And it's in the details below this video, along with the links to all the other parts of the videos. Thank you to them for making um, donations and making these videos possible. They take us months to make these types of videos where we're doing a long series like this. Um, if you want us to continue doing these sort of long-winded bow making series of videos, um, consider donating. Uh, it takes us a lot of time out of the workshop to make this sort of thing and edit them together. If you've got any idea about making videos or editing, you'll know how long it takes to make these sorts of things. And uh, yeah, if you don't, well, then we aren't gonna be able to make these sorts of videos and it'll be just some smaller silly ones that we've got time to do when we've got nothing better to do. We like those. Eh? Yeah, we like the silly ones occasionally. So yes, we're, we're here to help you make bows and arrows with our million years of knowledge and expertise and also, yeah, a bit of fun along the way. Uh, the reason I've got Richard here today is because he's going to be doing the last part of this particular bow. The easy bit. The easy bit, which is putting on the handle. And it's going to be much easier for me to be able to operate the camera and film someone else doing this fiddly job rather than trying to do it myself. All the other videos that you've seen have all been me filming myself, making it. Well, this is gonna make it a lot easier having Richard here. He just happens to be visiting. So it's gonna be a lot easier for me. Maybe not so easy for you, but a lot easier for me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so uh, what is this final process? What is the handle? We've got to put the handle on and hopefully in one of the previous videos we've shown that we've actually built up the yes. handle a little, little bit. Yeah. A lot of people making bows don't bother with that. It's just the square section just rounded off a little bit, which is okay, but we're copying what the Victorians did and we're making uh, not exact copies, but we're basing our bows on the Victorian sporting bow that was used by ladies and gentlemen. So they wanted a slightly nicer handle to, to hold on to. So we've done that. We've put a bit of masking tape on and I'm going to glue on the handle material. Now I've got a bow here. I'll just reach around and get it. Okay. Oh, this is a Which real, is real Victorian, a Victorian oh. bow. And the handle on this is velvet. Uh, we, we, we mainly now use uh, a braid or a leather. They used velvet, nice and comfortable. And also along the top and bottom, uh, a gold leaf leather strip, which is what we do. And we've had gold leaf uh, pieces made, which are like, like these, and these will go round the top and bottom of our, our handles. So uh, this particular bow, if you're interested, it's it's you, the belly is you, and it's backed with a thin layer of you sapwood. So you've got you heartwood and you sapwood. And the sapwood, um, they haven't bothered to follow the line of the grain. Um, there's quite short grain section there, if you can see, see that. Um, but looking at the arrow plate, and there's a mother of pearl arrow plate set in, which is what we do. You can feel a groove in that arrow plate. So this bow has shot an awful lot of arrows without any problems. Uh, so that's the sort of handle we're going to do. If I can have the bow back a minute. So what we will do if we were going to put a leather handle on this one, and we do give people the choice when we're making a bow. So we would have the leather around the handle like that, and then our gold leaf strip top and bottom. Because the rules for a longbow is that you should have no arrow rest. It's got to be shot off the hand. So your hand is there. There's no ridge or ledge to um, 
support the arrow. So when you put the arrow in the bow like this, it's actually resting on your hand. So when you hold the bow, you've got to make sure that your hand is in exactly the same place every time. So nothing to support the arrow. Now what some people are doing, if you take the leather strip back a minute and the arrow, hold the arrow for me please, is actually with the leather, bending it over and like that. So the handle, as you can see that, it forms a bit of a ridge, if I can have the arrow again, which if you're vertical doesn't actually support the bow, but it gives a definite position of where the arrow is. If you're canting the bow over, it would almost support the arrow. And in fact, the National Field Arch Society had to bring in a rule to make sure that that wasn't so thick that when the bow is held vertically, it holds the arrow on. Um, a lot of people field shooting count the bow and it would hold it. So I'm not sure the rule is tight as it should be. Um, I have had, and hold the arrow again, please. A, one of the really quite top, top archers who made his own bows were using thick leather, almost like a belt leather around the handle. And that certainly was forming an arrow rest. So you've got no problem with your hand being in different positions. It gives a definite position of where your hand is. Um, so that was, that was outlawed, but it just shows that people are bending the rules just a little bit to get that slight advantage. But we're making them as they were originally, so shot off the hand, no question about uh, having any support for the arrow. Right, I'm now going to put the bow on the bench, get the handle material to hand, glue on the handle material and the leather trim and finish it off. Great, I'll do the videoing then. Phew. To gauge where we're going to put the braid, we place and mark where the leather trim will sit. Once we've marked top and bottom, we can start gluing the area. We've added some masking tape to aid in adhesion. Any household glue will do, but we're using HMG, which we sell in our shop. After covering the handle in a good amount of glue, we can start positioning the braid. We've cut a slope at one end, which we will trap under the braid as we rotate the handle. A few blobs of glue onto the tucked section will help it all stay together. It's then a case of winding the braid carefully onto the handle. Now we're at the other end of the handle, we can repeat our sloped cut of the braid and tuck the end under the last turn of the material, not forgetting to add some more glue. Then make sure the braid is nice and tight to the handle. It's time to glue on our gold leaf leather trim. We start by wrapping it around to get the approximate length that we need. Then, much as we did with the braid, we run some glue on the handle, including the top of the braid, where we're going to overlap. We also place some glue on the back of the leather, as we're going to use it as a contact adhesive this time. With both surfaces glued, we need to wait a few minutes for it to go tacky before we can place the leather. Being careful to get the leather in the right place, we can begin attaching it to the handle. Once we're happy with the placement of the leather, we can overlap the excess and carefully make a join by cutting with a sharp knife and then butting those two ends together.
Well, there you are. That's how you put a handle onto a longbow, or at least the Victorian style. If you want a more in-depth video on you know, instructions on how to actually put the handle on, we have done another much longer, more detailed video of this particular process, which I'll put in the description box below. And don't forget, you don't have to do the same type of handle that we're doing here. As Richard mentioned, this is based on Victorian type handles. And it's not to say this is the only type of nope, Victorian handle and also not the only type of handle. So you can do whatever you want. You don't have to don't have to imitate us. That's fine. Um, there's one last thing Richard did to the bow. And what was that? The other end, the knock end, we put a piece of ribbon. There was a hole drilled through the horn knock at the top. Piece of ribbon through, tied off so that the two lengths when you put your bowstring on you can just tie those two round the loop of the string. It stops the string sliding down the bow and when you pull it out of the bow bag your string's down the bottom of the bag and you can't get to it. So it stops the string coming off and it saves you having a string keeper, a separate leather pouch with a hook on the end, saves you having one of those. It's, it's there and on a windy day it'll blow in the wind. You can see which way the wind's blowing. Dual purpose. Exactly. Very handy. Very Till they handy. ban it. Till, yes. <laughs> Till you have to go back to licking, licking your finger and things like that. All those other good longbow things that you've got to do. Well, there we are. Again, I hope you enjoyed watching this series of videos. And if you do want to do more of these sorts of in-depth videos, um, then consider donating. If not, don't worry. I'm sure we will continue to make videos. But uh, yes, much more sporadic and when we've and got daft the time. Ones. And daft ones. We like the daft ones. Yeah, if, if you don't want us to do these videos, <laughs> all you've got to do is say no, nope, and we will just make daft ones from now on that will annoy you. Uh, so it's your choice. And uh, some of the other things that we have got coming up are reviews of items from various archery companies and things around the world that sent us stuff to have a look at. So those will be coming up. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you did enjoy this series of videos. If you want to watch them all, I will put them below the links to all the different ones. And at some point I may put this all of them into one big mega long video, which should probably come out at about an hour and a <laughs> half, two hours video, um, when I can get round to doing that. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe. That really helps us out. Do comment below if there's anything you'd like to see or if you just want to say how wonderful we are or say rude things to us, which some people seem to like to do. And uh, yeah, uh, and check out the website, uh, the bow making website, um, howtomakealongbow.co.uk. He's also in the description and also our website where we sell things. Oh, yeah. When we actually aren't making videos, we do make things to sell, oh, yes. including this bow. Um, <laughs> this bow will be on our website for sale. As I say, the link is below, uh, unless, of course, it's already sold. <laughs> Who knows? It might sell the first five minutes this video goes live, or it might be there for five weeks. Um, have a look. You never know. You might get lucky. So, yeah, there's a couple of other videos on the screen and uh, a subscribe button, which is probably covering his face. So please do click that if you haven't already and hit the notification bell, which a lot of people don't know about. So you actually get notified when the new videos come out. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon for more silly bow making videos. <laughs> yeah. Ha, ha, ha.